Hello lovelies, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today we're going to be talking about Linda Ronstadt and her beauty secrets as well as her fashion. And before we talk about that, let's jump right in and talk a little bit about her bio. Linda Ronstadt is a multi award winning pop and country music superstar from the United States. She has sold over 100 million albums around the world. Linda was born in Arizona in 1946 and rose to fame as a solo singer after performing with the Stone Ponies in the 1960s. Heart Like a Wheel, her breakthrough album from 1974, earned her the first of her 12 Grammy Awards. She was praised for her ability to adapt to a wide range of musical styles, releasing albums that included country, rock, jazz, and Spanish language standards. Linda claimed in 2013 that she was unable to sing due to the effects of Parkinson's disease. In the same year, she released her memoir, Simple Dreams. Linda grew up surrounded by music. The Mexican tunes her father taught her and her brothers were one of her early musical inspirations. Her mother was a ukulele player and her father was a guitarist. She learned to play guitar and established a trio with her brother and sister following in her father's footsteps. Linda met local folk musician Bob Kimmel while attending Catalina High School. Kimmel, who's a few years older than Linda, relocated to LA to pursue his music career and tried to persuade her to do the same. She stayed in Tucson and enrolled in the University of Arizona, but she soon dropped out to join Kimmel in LA. In 1967, Linda and Kimmel formed the Stone Ponies with Kenny Edwards, and the folk trio produced their first record. The group's second album, Evergreen Volume 2, was also released in 1967 and was a small success. However, Different Drum, penned by Michael Nesmith of the Monkees, was their lone hit. By the end of the 1960s, Linda had established herself as a solo artist. She recorded numerous albums with various backing bands, one of which was the core of the Eagles lineup. Her early efforts were not very successful, however, she was nominated for a Grammy Award for the ballad A Long Long Time in 1971. Linda ultimately made it huge with Heart Like a Wheel following better reception for her 1973 album Don't Cry Now. The album included a cover of Hank Williams' I Can't Help It. If I'm Still in Love with You, which earned the singer her first of 12 Grammy Awards, Don't Cry Now would eventually receive a double platinum certification. Linda then followed up with Prisoner in Disguise in 1975, which was a huge hit. Love is a Rose, a Neil Young version, and The Tracks of My Tears, a Smokey Robinson classic, were among the songs on the album. Hastin' Down the Wind, Linda's third consecutive million-selling album, featured covers of Buddy Holly's That'll Be The Day and Willie Nelson's Crazy. Her greatest hits was released in the same year and although receiving some criticism for being released so early in her career, the album sold millions of copies. Simple Dreams in 1977 featured her classic interpretations of Buddy Holly's It's So Easy and Warren Zevin's Poor Poor Pitiful Me and the Rolling Stones' Tumbing Dice as well as Roy Orbison's penned Blue Bayou, which became a huge hit. And Linda continued to top the charts with Living in the USA 1978, which contained her cover of Smokey Robinson's Ooh Baby Baby, and then with the successful Mad Love in 1979. Linda made a shift to Broadway in 1980, starring in an opera for which she was nominated for a Tony Award. Linda also dabbled in jazz and pop classics in the 1980s. She collaborated with renowned arranger Nelson Riddle on the albums What's New, 1983, Lush Life, 1984, and For Sentimental Reasons, 1985. In 1987, she released the album Trio with Dolly Parton and Emmy Lou Harris, which produced four massive country songs, including To Know Him Is To Love Him and reworking of Phil Spector's 1958 smash, The Teddy Bears. The album spent five weeks at the top of the country charts, received multiple music award nominations, and won a Grammy Award for Best Country Performance by a Duo or Group and Vocal. Linda acknowledged her absence from the music industry in recent years in August 2013, revealing that she had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, which prevented her from singing. She says, I couldn't sing for the life of me, and I couldn't figure out why. She says, because of the symptoms I've had, I believe I've had it for seven or eight years. 
Then I had a shoulder procedure, which I assumed was the cause of my trembling hands. In her book, Simple Dreams, Linda dives into her elements of her life. The book chronicles her rise to fame as a musician, but it makes no mention of her sickness. Linda went on a book tour to promote her memoir, despite the physical obstacles she faced as a result of her Parkinson's disease. The book takes readers behind the scenes of her childhood in Arizona, her early days in the LA music scene, and her career as a pop singer in the 1970s and 80s. The novel will go on to become a New York Times bestseller. Following the release of her album, False Heart, Linda devoted more time to her personal life and family, which included her adopted children, Mary Clementine and Carlos. She and her children spent several years in Tucson, her hometown. Linda currently resides in San Francisco. Linda never married despite associations with the former California governor, Jerry Brown, and filmmaker, George Lucas. She says, I'm really lousy at compromise, and there's a lot of compromise in marriage. And I found a fairly recent interview with Linda and it talks all about her style and beauty routine. And I honestly found it really hard to find the exact beauty products that she used. And trust me, I like looked for a long time because I've been wanting to do this video for a while. And the first question that is asked to her says, do you think of yourself as a style icon? And she says, if there ever was a person who was less style conscious than me, I don't know who it is. You have to go to Berkeley to find her. When I was growing up, my mother sewed all my clothes and I thought that's what everyone did. My dad made jewelry for a hobby and that became my uniform. Sundresses and hoop earrings my parents made for me. She said when she started wearing Levi's, I would scrounge secondhand clothing stores. This was before we called it vintage and she would wear lace blouses with a contra belt my dad made me. She says we were hippies so we knew we weren't supposed to dress like other people, but we didn't always know what that left us with. And the next question is, what are your most memorable looks? For years, I lived in three Betsy Johnson dresses. We were always on the road, so I couldn't send them to the dry cleaners. I'd wash those dresses in the sink, and it took me a very long time to realize that they were shrinking and shrinking. I'd wind up on stage in these tiny, really short dresses, but I was so unaware of the style. I carried my dresses wrapped up in my purse when I got on an airplane in case the airline lost my luggage. I never had curves. I was built like a stuffed animal, but I was small. For, so for me to wear something, I only had to ask the question, does this make me look like a panda? The next question is, who were your style icon? She says, I remember one night I, I was at the Troubadour Club in West Hollywood with Janis Joplin, and we were talking about how much we loved Maria Maldar's blouse. It was also Betsy Johnson, and it had a scoop neck and long peasant sleeves. We got it from Maria, took it apart and shared the pattern with each other. And the next question is, did you have a beauty routine? And she says, my beauty routine was to wash my hair and find someone who could trim my bangs without making me look stupid. Then someone taught me how to twist them in front and snip them myself. The other day I found a picture of myself at the Grammys and obviously this was before the Grammys were a big deal because I had pin curls in my hair and a cotton scarf wrapped around them. Can you imagine? I wanted to look good for the parties after the Grammys. If I went to the Grammys with my hair curly, it would have been flat by the time the party started. And I feel like when I'm thinking about which beauty products she probably used, I feel like she probably just used kind of what was available, maybe like drugstore beauty products. But I just, for some reason, based on what she's saying about her style and her approach to beauty, I kind of feel like she just used whatever was available and didn't necessarily go out of her way to find extremely luxury beauty products. And she was more casual about it and kind of did the almost hippie look. Linda finds it difficult to appreciate her fashion sense, which has been copycatted by many free people loving millennials. She says, I was just a geek standing around in Levi's shorts trying to get as close to the music as I could, she says with a shrug. There was plenty of pressure to look sexy, but there wasn't pressure to be dressed and stuffed. I never wore makeup until I was about 25. I wore a little bit of eyeliner and some mascara, but face makeup and blush and shading and everything like that, I didn't know how to do any of that. I didn't own any of that stuff. And that's what I was saying. She was very minimal. And I really feel like when I look at all these old photos of her and her fashion, that she is such a huge influence on style today. And I can even see with her haircut how Zoe De Chanel has kind of copied her look in many ways. And she said she modeled her style off the waitress at the Sunset Strip Club, the Troubadour, particularly the iconic Betsy Johnson mini dress that she wore to all her big performances. She kept the purple striped dress in her purse, washing it in the sink at night until it became short that she had to give it away to the Goodwill. 
So it was really interesting researching her. I wish I really could find out what she used, but honestly, I have a feeling she probably even used like Maybelline mascara and like a simple Revlon eyeliner and probably didn't even use foundation and just kind of did whatever. I feel like I know Stevie Nicks back in the day used Erno Laszlo, so there's a chance maybe she used some of those beauty products, but I just don't think she really cared that much and was more interested in the music. And probably at the time, she wasn't even trying to be a fashion trendsetter. She was just doing what she wanted and being herself. So I don't know, I just think it was different than it is nowadays, how people spend so much time trying to create this image instead of making it more effortless. So that's kind of just my opinion in the whole thing. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know who you want me to do next. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.